There's a news producer at Channel 4 in San Francisco. This one right here is my last class I taught after 32 years of teaching at San Francisco State. The students are all excited to see me go. <laughs> the cancer story started for me when I went to the ER because my urine had become very dark and I knew that that was a sign that something was wrong. Then there was a gastroenterologist there who suggested that I go to UCSF and get a endoscopy. And they discovered the cancer there. He had no symptoms, he wasn't losing weight, so it was a total shock as I remember. They then referred me to Dr. Adam. The diagnosis was ampullary cancer, which is in the GI tract. The treatment for that is surgery, plus or minus chemotherapy. The surgery that you do for this is the Whipple operation, and it's a very aggressive and complex operation. He's 80 year old, has multiple medical conditions. Some might say that you shouldn't be operating. And I think this is really important for people out there. When they are told that surgery is not possible, then I think they should seek second opinion with the kind of cancer that he has. For patients who don't undergo surgery, their survival could be around a year. I evaluated John, and after discussing with him, we went ahead with surgery. I told him as he wheeled John off that it was my birthday and I expected the birthday gift of having my husband back at the end of the day, thank you. And he said, don't worry, I will. I read about the Whipple. I had a little problem with the word Whipple. It makes it sound like, oh, it's nothing. And it should be called something else because it sort of diminishes the complexity of what they're doing. Basically, they have to redirect all the plumbing there. It's like the guy who gets underneath your sink with the dishwasher and says, who did this before? Because the pipes are all in the wrong way. Traditionally, this procedure is done through an open approach where you have a 15 to 20 inch incision. Ready? But the robot has made it more feasible where the procedure is done through small cuts, which translate into more precision, less pain because of the small incisions, and shorter stay in the hospital afterward. Let me just uh, create the plane for you here. Uh, if you just give me a downward traction. Here at UCSF, we are committed to optimal patient outcome. So we have two surgeons doing this procedure. That's unique. A lot of places would basically say, why would I have two surgeons in one room? you know, when, when one of them can do it by themselves. And, you know, it, if you look at it from a business standpoint, from a financial standpoint, there's a good logic in asking that question. But together, you could do unbelievable things, you know, especially the difficult parts. It just opens up a lot of doors. When you have two people, they're looking at it differently. They avoid complications because they have different eyesights, different mentalities. They are looking at it with different experiences, and they bring that together. You happy? Yeah, so let's get the listeners first. Okay. We learn so much from each other that we have modified our technique to make it more efficient and to make it potentially safer than how I was taught to do it. Nice, Mohammed. There's a lot of smaller places popping up around the country that actually do a lot of things, including Whipple surgery. But the problem is the outcomes are not so great. I got this side if you want to get that side. If you are a candidate for this minimally invasive robotic surgery, you better have it in a program that is safe, that has expertise, that has a structure way of doing this procedure. 16 down again is birth announcement abbreviation. I don't remember waking up. I was hoping I would wake up. So when it happened, I guess I was fine. The doctor came very quickly after that and said everything went well. This is uh, holier. He stayed only five days in the hospital. It's incredible to have such complex procedure with no complication and the pain is being managed with Tylenol and no opioids. We are tremendously lucky to have a place like UCSF. They create medical teams that really surround you with support. I want to make sure that our patients are being cared for as people, not as tumors. And you have so many people contributing to that at UCSF. It's been eight weeks now since surgery, and I'm feeling really good. My wonderful wife, Annette, has been at my side the whole time. 
She's somebody I couldn't do this whole procedure and the recovery without. I'm so happy to see him getting back to normalcy. His pathology was favorable. He didn't need any chemo treatment after that. And right now he's cancer free and his prognosis is, is really good at this point. I'm just glad I'm sitting here. I couldn't ask for anything more. You better hang on to me. <laughs> We're going over here. <laughs>